Hello and welcome to The Rabbit Atheist. I'm Ed Raby, a former pastor turned atheist, now a compassionate anti-theist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like or dislike the video as you see fit, so feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. You're also free to share my videos as much as you like, because the purpose of this channel is educational in regards to atheist and deconversion issues and any issues related to those issues. A hearty shout out to the Rabbit Nation. Join the nation by hitting that subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel in a more tangible way, hit the membership button and your membership options for citizenship will be presented to you. Uh, today I want to continue on the case against God's existence. And today, uh, oh, as always, I have to kind of give my disclaimer. I am an agnostic atheist, so I don't necessarily feel that I can say there is no God. I just don't find any of the evidence that people give for the existence of God compelling anymore. And so I just don't think it's sufficient and it lacks in evidential qualities that I'm looking for. So, and probably pretty much anybody's looking for if they really think about it. But I'm going through these arguments of people that say there is no God and the arguments against the existence of God. One, to be fair, because I've done all the ones for the existence of God, and two, for my own examination purposes. I don't necessarily hold to these views. In fact, if you stick around for my evaluation, you'll often find that I'm very critical of many of these views. And very few of them so far have survived. Okay, so uh, we'll see at the end of this series, which is coming very quickly. I think I've got maybe one or two more of these, maybe up to part 15, and then part 16 will be a kind of a capstone and an evaluation. I think that's kind of where, what I'm seeing at this point. So. What I want to talk about today, though, is three subjective arguments for the existence, for the non-existence of God. Now, there are many subjective arguments for the existence of God, and a lot of these, basically the subjective arguments against the, a supernatural entity or supernatural stuff, were mainly relying on the testimony experience of witnesses, or were being critical of the general propositions of religion and belief in general, okay? Whereas the theist makes uh, subjective arguments using witnesses um, or using the basic propositions of religion in general, these subjective arguments kind of counter those and say, well, but there's a subjective argument to be had against some of the things that you're saying too. Now there's three of these. I want to hit them all. They're very simple to explain. And I think the critique of them is going to be pretty much similar for all of them. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I want to get them out here. Uh, but basically, the three are the witness argument, the conflicting religions argument, and the disappointment argument. Okay, now these are all subjective, openly admitted. Okay, but let's deal with the first one. The witness argument uh, gives credibility to personal witnesses, contemporary and from the past, who disbelieve or strongly doubt the existence of God. Okay. The theist often makes the statement, but God belief has been around since who knows how long. And there's always been a large proportion of people who believe in the supernatural, believe in God. I mean, even today in the world, while atheism is growing in many countries by leaps and bounds, uh, Europe is very atheistic, particularly some certain Scandinavian countries. Uh, atheism in the United States is growing. But if you go around the rest of the world, there's a lot of people that still believe in God, believe in Christianity, Hinduism, so on and so forth. So the theist always argues, well, a vast majority of people have always believed in religion or a supernatural entity or whatever, so something must be out there that exists. And, you know, the subjective argument against it, yeah, but there's always been people in every society throughout history that have not believed, okay, or, you know, maybe disbelieved in the religion of their area, or think it's all nonsense, or have been atheists. There's been atheists around for a long time. And so this notion that just, you know, the argument popularum is countered by the argument, well, yeah, existence of non-believers. Okay, so you can't, what it really does is it kind of, to me, this argument just kind of basically undercuts the ad popularum argument for the existence of God. Most people believe in God, so therefore God must be real. And this says, well, there's always been an element of society that doesn't believe. Just because the majority believes something 
doesn't make it right. Okay, so and there's always been a counter to this majority belief that could be also right. Okay, that's the witness argument. The conflicted religion argument notes that um, many religions give differing accounts of God, what God is and what God wants, and they're very conflicting. And since all of these contradictory accounts cannot be correct, if not uh, most, if not all, arguments for the existence of God can be incorrect. Okay, um, this is very, you know, it, it's basically saying, listen, you've got all these different counts of how God is, what he wants. You know, they can't all be right. Okay, you know, they... It's possible for all of them to be false, but it's not possible for all of them to be right. And so some of these gods and some of these things that are proposed obviously are going to be false. And the atheist simply says, well, let's just take this all the way and just say they all might be false. Um, so that's kind of that one where it counters the idea, well, religious systems are everywhere, so therefore God. And it's like, no, because your religious systems are contradictory and so on and so forth. So it kind of goes back and forth. Uh, the disappointment argument is claims that when asked for, there's often no visible help from God. And so there's no real reason to believe that when you ask God for help, that he's going to be there. Now, this counters the idea, well, you know, well, prayer, you know, people pray and stuff happens. And the non-believer says, yeah, people pray and stuff doesn't happen. Okay. Um, you know, I think the theist countered all these arguments is kind of built into the whole subjectivity. If you notice, this seems to be the dialogue of point counterpoint. You know, the theist says something, the atheist says, well, yeah, but, you know, this. And, you know, if it, they talk about eyewit personal witnesses of the testimony of God, well, then the, the theist says, yeah, but there's always been people that I don't believe. Uh, well, this religion seems to have a pretty good dialogue of God, but, you know, this one counters this, you know, the atheist turns and says, yeah, but all these religions have conflicting views, and they can't all be right, so why can't all of them be wrong? Uh, the disappointment argument, you know, well, I prayed and something happened, well, I prayed and something didn't happen, that argument gets even more serious when it's like when somebody's murdered or raped or whatever, and God doesn't intervene, right, in stopping it. It's like, well, Either God is, you know, this brings up the whole problem of evil argument and the problem of suffering argument. In fact, the disappointment argument is kind of the subjective side of that uh, in a certain respect. Um, what's my evaluation? I think the problem with all subjective arguments is they're subjective. Okay, there's no, we're just, you know, it's, it's our personal experiences and our experience with the world and experience with religion. And I'm going to be consistent here, and I say I don't think arguments for personal experience without, you know, sub objective truth, some sort of scientific empirical data, some sort of historical verification, some way of looking at it logically and saying, yes, we could use this in a court of law to prove something. If we don't have those things, okay, then I think you're opening up the door to subjectivity where it's not really going to be all that helpful. While I do think there is a use to these arguments, I think the use is countering the subjective arguments of the theist. I think what the subjective arguments really prove is if we try to be subjective about the notion of the existence of God, we're going to spend all day going around in circles. Okay, And that's the problem with subjectivity, is it doesn't allow us, you know, personal experience, our experience with religion in the world, or non-religion, belief and non-belief, uh, answered prayer, non-answered prayer, uh, you know, the whole back and forth doesn't really get anywhere. And I think what these subjective arguments for the non-existence of God, they kind of inject that we're not getting anywhere, we're being the hamster in the wheel kind of thing. And we're not getting anywhere because point, counterpoint, point, counterpoint, back and forth. So I'm not sure they're really all that useful other than it kind of points out that the whole subjectivity, human experience, arguments, the feelings that we have about religion, the thoughts we have about religion and prayer and things like that, don't really get us anywhere in this discussion of whether or not God exists. So I'm not sure that these are really good arguments against the non-existence of God, but they are really good counters 
to some of the arguments, the subjective arguments for the existence of God. In other words, what we do with all of these is the subjectivity just kind of means that we have to take any subjective stuff out of it in order to really get some objective ideas of whether or not God exists. So I suppose they have their use, utility use in showing that subjective arguments either way don't really work. And that would be kind of my evaluation. Well, I did all three of these together because I, I kind of felt that the evaluation was going to be the same. So we get all three of these out of the way. But from my perspective, subjectivity on such an important question as whether or not God exists doesn't really help us one way or the other. And so I think that's kind of what these subjective arguments do. They just kind of get rid of the subjectivity as any valid form of argument either way. And so that's kind of where I'm going to put these arguments, that that's their utility use. They aren't really a silver bullet against the existence of God. They're not really, you know, this is the concrete proof that God doesn't exist. And I don't think those that make them actually make that claim either anyway. So that's kind of where I'm going to leave it. Well, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate every like, share, and subscribe. Uh, this has been a kind of a little bit shorter one, but I think it, it adequately explains and deals with them. Um, you know, I always appreciate everybody who supports the channel, whether you're a theist or non-theist. Um, for me, Thursdays are the running discussion of whether or not God exists, and I keep waiting for theists to put up stuff that has evidence. And But at the same time, I'm not seeing that the atheist who says there is no God has any really solid arguments, although I think they have a couple really good ones. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see how this plays out. Like I said, there's a couple more parts to this. And then we'll be closing out the series. I've got to do some inductive arguments, and then we'll we'll get to the end of it, and I'll do some final words. And then after that, I think the next series I'll be doing will be a series on the standards of evidence, okay, and how the standards of evidence need to apply here. Um, what I'm looking for, and what I think everybody's looking should be looking for. But thanks once again for stopping by. Like, share, subscribe, do the things that you do, share the video. Uh, always interested in this discussion, and it's kind of a running discussion, so thank you very much. And as always, live your best life. You only get one go around, and then it's over. So don't waste your time on the trappings of religion and faith, but rather give all those things, uh, your time, your money, your opportunities, your treasure, uh, give it all to yourself and the people you love and care for and to make this a better world. You'll be happier if you do. Trust me, I speak from experience. And as always, thanks for stopping by. And I'll catch you next time.